Hi there. My name is Greg Persinger, and I'm the owner of Vivid Illumination. I'm a 21-year lighting industry veteran touring with acts such as Reuben McIntyre, Bricks and Dunn, Duran Duran, and Phillips Craig and Dean. Today, my specialty is lighting design for churches. Over the years, I've worked with hundreds of different churches, and I've picked up lots of tips and techniques along the way. I'd like to share some of those techniques with you in these church tech talks. Today we're going to talk about moving lights. Uh, in the last few years, moving lights have become really popular in churches, and for good reason. They add a lot of versatility to your lighting rig, and they also add a lot of excitement to your worship. But before you make an investment in moving lights, you need to know a little bit about the strengths and weaknesses of the fixtures. And we'll go over that a little bit later in this video, but before we do that, let's cover the basic types of fixtures. The first fixture that we have is a spot fixture. Spot fixtures have a hard edge to them. Uh, they have gobos in color, as well as the typical pan and tilt. The second fixture type is a wash fixture. A wash fixture usually has a soft edge to it. Uh, it has some focus, but it's more of a spot and flood uh, of the beam and full color mixing as well as pan and tilt. The third fixture type is relatively new to the market and it's called a hybrid fixture. With a hybrid fixture, you get some of the aspects of a spot fixture, such as the gobo patterns, but you also get some of the aspects of a wash fixture, such as a soft edge beam, all in one fixture. So now that we know a little bit about the fixtures, let's talk about how we use them in church. The spot fixture is most commonly used to do beam looks. A beam look is nothing more than the light coming from the back, shooting through the air. Uh, usually the air is hazed up with a hazer. Um, if you don't use a hazer, you're not gonna see the beam look. The next use for a spot fixture is pattern projection. This is where you use the light to project patterns and colors on the walls and scenic pieces. A lot of churches don't like haze in the room, and so if you don't haze the room, you'll never see the beams in a beam look. So instead, you use the light to project patterns on the walls and drapes. The third use for a spot fixture is what I call a focusable special. This is where you use the light to move and highlight different objects and people on your stage. Next on our list is the wash fixture. I think the wash fixture is a great bang for your buck, especially for those churches that aren't gonna put haze in the air. Uh, with a wash fixture, because it has a, a capability to do a tight zoom or a wide zoom, uh, it gives you a lot of versatility. You can use it as a focusable special, you can use it to wash the stage, you can use it as backlight, or you can light drape and scenic pieces with it as well. Now this brings us to the hybrid fixture. It's a combination of a spot fixture and a wash fixture with the added functionality of a beam fixture as well, which gives you great versatility in your lighting rig. Regardless of fixture type, moving lights bring you, the designer, many different options to use in your church environment. You can use them for backlighting, you can use them for beam looks, you can use them for scenic looks, you can use them to light drape, or you can use them to light your worship band. However, to take full advantage of a moving light, you need to be aware of some pitfalls. For example, Moving lights need regular maintenance. When the lamps get to the end of their lamp life, they need to be replaced. They also need to be cleaned regularly. Moving lights require a console that can actually control them. One of the things you need to look at before you make an investment in moving lights is whether your console can support moving light operation or not. Additionally, you should look at training. Uh, one of the things that I see most often is that people make an investment in moving lights, but they don't actually know how to use them. Uh, talk to your integrator about getting a training package along with your purchase. Along with a financial investment in moving lights, you have to be willing to invest the time in programming them. One of the biggest misconceptions of moving lights is that once you have them set up and you have a console that can control them, you press a button and they just go. And that's not the case at all. I can't tell you how many times I've had a worship leader walk up to me after we first turned the lighting rig on and wanted to see what the show was gonna look like before any programming was done. A good rule of thumb is that for every minute of music in your show, you're gonna spend at least an hour programming. Oh, and one more thing while you're programming. Just because it's a moving light doesn't mean that the light has to move all the time. Be tasteful in your programming. Make your moves count. And speaking of moving, I see that my time's up and it's time for me to move on. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.